Hi, I'm here today with Neha Chaudhry from the CIS India. I guess that's, that's what the Center for Internet and Society in India, which is an NGO. And we're at the SSCR 28, which is a, a World Intellectual Property Organization meeting on copyright. And it's the 28th meeting. It's July 3rd, 2014. Can you tell us what's going on this week? Um, well, this week there are two key issues that uh, member nations are debating at SSCR 28. The first of them is a proposed treaty for the protection of broadcasting organizations. And the second and the third items on the agenda are limitations and exceptions. The first of these is limitations and exceptions for libraries and archives. And the second is limitations and exceptions for teaching, education, research, and persons with uh, other disabilities. And how's it going so far? It's been interesting. We've had two and a half days of uh, discussions on the Treaty for the Protection of Broadcasting Organizations, out of which I think a good part of, I, I think almost two days were uh, spent in the informals, which um, NGOs and a couple of other member nations that weren't participating in were allowed to listen into, but weren't allowed to write on or report on. And I think um, there has been more progress, honestly, through the informals than there has been for the past two or three sessions of the SCCR on the proposed treaty for broadcasting organizations. On limitations and exceptions... Well, just, well, just a second, before you get on, yeah. do you think that it's likely or unlikely that WIPO will have a diplomatic conference on the broadcasting treaty within the next two years? Within the next two years? Maybe more likely in the year after, not next year for sure. I mean, some member nations are pushing and broadcasters are pushing um, extensively for a diplomatic conference in 2015, but I don't think that after the outcome of this meeting we're going to have a diplomatic conference in 2015. For, from the point of your organization, do you, do you have concerns <laughs> about the broadcasting treaty as it relates to the internet? Yeah. And could you just elaborate on that? Well, the broadcasting treaty not just over the internet, but the broadcasting treaty as such on a variety of levels. One, the fact that the need for the treaty hasn't been established, and this is a treaty that we have been negotiating, that the member nations have been negotiating for the past 15 years, and haven't conclusively established the need for such a treaty, um, number one. Number two, on specifically creating an additional layer of rights for broadcasters over and above existing copyright law, mechanisms that do exist in international and national legal systems is something else that we find problematic. So, along with a variety of other concerns that broadcast treaty has. Why, why, would you, uh, why would you give a right to someone that transmitted information that was separate from whatever rights they might have for copyright? The logic that is being uh, put forth is that there is uh, an underlying investment in broadcasting that needs to be protected, which is the rationale that the broadcasters are putting forward because they put, they're put they supposedly making great investments in infrastructure. That is what they seek to protect. But all of this is, I, I think, in our opinion, already protected under existing mechanisms, international legal mechanisms, so we genuinely fail to see the rationale for having an existing additional layer of rights by the broadcasters. You, you appreciate it. I intend to be a broadcaster as soon as we finish with I, this statement, yeah, right? Yes, I can, I can <laughs> see that. <laughs> so I guess in some ways the huge investment in broadcasting has actually decreased in the last couple of years, yes, right? Yes, it has. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then on the limitations and exceptions, what's going on there? Well, the limitations and exceptions on libraries and archives is this time I think more contentious than it has been in the past two SECRs. We've had strong opening statements by um, member nations either for text-based negotiations for, or for limitations and exceptions on libraries and archives, um, largely coming from the African group supported by India, supported by GRULAC as well. And on the other hand, the European Union has been very clear in stating its position where they have said that we are not going to uh, engage in discussions on, on text-based negotiations for limitations and exceptions for libraries and archives.
Where's the strongest opposition coming for the work on limitations and exceptions? The European Union is the sense that I get. That's the sense that I get. And why do you think that is? Well, <laughs> um, I'm not sure really. The, the, from what I gather from the statements, it's that uh, the claim that limitations and exceptions in existing national and international legal regimes, systems that exist at the moment, are sufficient to address the concerns of libraries and archives, and therefore the opposition is that we don't need a binding international legal instrument. Why? I am really not too sure. <laughs> Well, I, I was told once by an EU negotiator, he reminded me that, well, the United States may have a, a big position in terms of entertainment publishers, okay. like movies, for example. Okay. He said Europe had a very strong position okay. in educational publishing and academic okay. publishing okay. and in the book industry. Okay. And that, uh, that the European Union, he said, would resist work on limitation exceptions are related to education or access to knowledge because of the, the strong position of the publishers in Europe vis-a-vis -vis the global market. And in the United States this would be because of the... Well, the, he, he, he thought the United States would be primarily see itself as protecting the motion picture industry or some of the entertainment industries or the software industries I mean he that was how he was sort of describing things and uh, I just wonder if if, uh, if you think it, if you think from your point of view does it make sense for the European Union to try and pre prevent uh, or slow down the adoption of robust exceptions that libraries would use or educators would use at a time when there's a, a, a parallel interest in having countries have stronger enforcement of intellectual property rights. I mean, we've, we've often taken the position that if you want countries to enforce laws that they have in the books, that there should be a just law or a reasonable law, and that countries be more enthusiastic about enforcing laws that they thought were fair than they thought were unfair. I mean, you, you, you come from a country that has a fairly nuanced law as far as the exceptions are concerned in India. But throughout the, throughout the rest of the world, that's not always the case. Is that correct? That's correct. So I, I think your interest in, in limitation exceptions, for example, from India is not so much in the, to benefit India itself, right? Because you already have a, a system of exceptions. No, we have a system of uh, exceptions, but I think uh, the interest in limitations and exceptions, not just for us, but for a bunch of other organizations, including yourself, including KEI, is also to facilitate these things like intellectual lending, which, unless you have a harmonized or, you know, an international legal regime that exists, that exists in some commonality on that agrees on certain bare minimum principles isn't something that's possible. Also within India, libraries and archives are one of the primary sources of access to educational and learning material. Um, so to have to ensure that libraries and archives themselves have access to material and therefore also facilitate better access to knowledge, information, and education, limitations and exceptions um, being deliberated at the international level of critical point of view of India. Well, thank you very much. Is there anything you'd like to add before I turn off the camera? Thank you very much. Nice talking to you. <laughs>